Hi, Dave Youngquist, and welcome to Last Cavalry TV. Today we have a special episode. It's the 99th anniversary of the Battle of Verdun, February 21st, 1916. So, I wanted to show you some original examples of French and German gear from that time period, and they're also being used as reference for the new uh, upcoming trench video, which we'll be doing more with in the future. And when we're done looking at the military, I'm going to show you a really cool, simple way to make sandbags. Let's get started. The French Lebel rifle. French infantry used this rifle along with the Berthier rifle and the Berthier carbine at the Battle of Verdun. The French Adrian helmet, introduced in 1915. This is an original French tunic from the 97th Infantry Regiment. The 97th Regiment was engaged in Verdun at Vaux and in the town of Duomol. This is a photo and pay book of a Palou from the 97th Regiment. This is an M2 gas mask issued to the French troops. Notice it does not have a respirator which was introduced later in the war about 1917. The three ammo pouches, two worn in front, one in back. The metal can was used to hold the gas mask. Note the canteen on the left side. The French issued cup, mess kit, it's a pair of wire cutters, 1918 dated, but still used in the period. There is the uh, bayonet, grease can, putties to wrap around the legs, box and matches. The German G98 rifle, used extensively by the German infantry. Machine gun troops, cavalry, stormtroopers quite often use 98 AZ carbine, which will show in upcoming. The German Feldmutz or field cap is worn with its camouflage band. The tunic is a 1910-15 transitional tunic. You notice the gas mask can. The two G98 ammo pouches, stick grenade, and belt. The German mess kit, spoon and fork combination, Bing drinking cup, you see a trench dagger, bayonet, water bottle, early gas mask with respirator, the leather mask was in there. German helmet first introduced in February at Verdun, 1916. So you can see that I've started another trench diorama. This one's going to consist of five figures and at least a hundred or so sandbags. So I want to show you how to make them simply and I'm using Aves two-part epoxy putty. And first I want to show you basically just how to make a single sandbag and then how to replicate them quickly and easily. So you mix equal parts, A and B. Yeah, a little more of that. There we go and you knead them together. So, we've let this cure for about 10 minutes. Now, to make a sandbag, again, I'm working in 1 15th scale or 120 millimeter, 
and just adjust this, you know, to whatever scale you happen to be working on. And I'll tell you, for uh, you know, doing the front of a uh, like a Sherman tank or something, this is going to be a real great way to do it. It's going to look far more realistic than you know the pre-made ones that you buy. So we've got a nice little blob, approximately the correct size, and we need to then just uh, twist just slightly here. Okay, now we're going to take a toothpick, and I've taken this toothpick and dipped it, the end of it, in super glow, or super glue. See, start creating the tie for the bag. And I'm doing this just a bit quicker than normal, but I'll tell you the technique is always the same. Add some stitch marks. And then I've got a piece of old t-shirt, I'll set that down for a minute, that I'm going to stretch out over my finger and we begin to add the texture for the sandbag. Now this one's going to be buried by other sandbags and I'm going to trim just a bit of this off here. It's a little, little too much for my liking. Get rid of that. Remove that. Get rid of some of that there. And normally you'd want this to uh, set up eh, maybe another 10 minutes or so, but this will do for now. A little more texture. Okay, we can take that the brush, drop it right into place. Then for the final step, I have some very, very fine solder. I'm going to cut. Make sure you can see that. Fold over. We're going to cut that. Give it a twist. Ah, hands are covered with the putty. Ah, there we go. Had to get a grip on it. Okay, so we twist that Then, all we do is just <clears throat> push that in. We've got our tie for the sandbag, and I will trim the excess off. when this hardens up. Now, how to reproduce a whole bunch of sandbags because you don't have to, you know, scratch build one every single time. So in the past, I've used this mold putty, but I don't like it. It's uh, real greasy, doesn't set right all the time. So, I brought in this new product line called Instamold. Drop it in the hot water. We'll let that sit for a minute. And it's going to soften up. And what's cool about this stuff is that uh, once it you know, gets really warm and pliable, you can then create a very simple mold. If you don't like what you've done, you can reheat it, so it's it's infinitely reusable. And I wanted to show you that I've I made one this morning, 
and I did add just a bit of talc in there. Now they say you don't necessarily have to do that, but I think that's always a, a good idea. And by talc, I really, baby powder. Got that somewhere in the house, I'm sure. And why that's getting soft, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make up a, another batch of putty. Dun, dun, dun. This will only take a moment. And we'll put it right into, we'll set that aside for a second. We're going to put this right into that mold that I made earlier today. Press it in there, like so. Let it set, or gently lift it out. Sandbag. Now, of course, you got to trim off the excess, and I'd probably do that normally. You know, again, after this is set up a bit more. But I mean, this this technique's turned me into a sandbag making machine. I'll tell you, I mean, you can, you can really, really go. Look at that. Boom. Done. That's simple. Now, we're going to take this, and I'll show you, and I've got a sandbag, again, that I made earlier, painted it tan, just make it look cool. So you can see this stuff. I take this sandbag. here and we're just going to make a mold with it. A little more hot water there. It's a little bit sloppy but you know what? It's getting every single bit of uh, detail that we created on our sandbag. Take that, pop that out, we've got a mold, and I'll tell you, it works. Now comes the next step. i got to make about 100 of these things. Uh, thanks again for stopping by. I really hope you've enjoyed this special episode of Last Cavalry TV. We'll see you again real soon.